respected uh, Dr. Ravichandra, Director of IIT, Dr. Kamakoti, <coughs> other illustrious personalities present here, and uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you, Dr. Ravichandra, for calling me here. I am glad I presented this meeting. Uh, it's very difficult to speak after you and uh, the IIT director. <laughs> I am a very small person before uh, both of you. However, I will just share a few of my thoughts. Uh, regarding Dr. Ravichandran, he is somebody whom I have been seeing for the last 20 years. He is an inspirational personality for young nephrologists. Uh, first time when I encountered him was uh, when uh, a drug called mycophenolate mofetil, there are many transplant patients here, you will know. For example, a dialysis patient. A dialysis machine, I think, is a complicated stuff because so much of work within the four hours saves lives, keeps life going on for many years for most of the CKD patients. That I mean is completely an uh, uh, engineering challenge compared to the days when my teachers used to uh, teach it up, which I don't know. Running a dialysis used to be a challenge, we have to prepare the materials. And that it was really a huge process. Getting ready for dialysis will take a few hours before you start dialysis. Today, in 10 minutes, we can start dances. That's again a model. So, if you take anything that we do, uh, for the, the ease of our operations now today, today we have robotic surgeries, where the robot will fix where the suture is to be done. The robot does uh, joint replacements. So, this is uh, a great uh, cooperation and collaboration between these two fields. And I'm sure under the guidance of uh, Dr. Kamakoti, we'll be doing many more things that are indigenous to this country. Again, I guess I request to you that we should make indigenous dialysis Because uh, each dialysis machine we're importing from Germany, from the Brazilian company, it costs about seven lakhs. And it uh, comes with the its duty and uh, import duty, etc. Et and though we talk about prevention, still there are a large number of patients requiring dialysis and the way diabetes is increasing in our population. Uh, we are going to have more patients on diabetes. So we keep talking about prevention, but still, there is a large population that will require dialysis over a long period of time. And in Asia, these numbers are projected to be very, very high. Some attempts at making some indigenous dialysis patients are there uh, in India, but however, it is not really materialized. Probably, under the leadership of Dr. Tamagoti, we should be able to make indigenous dialysis patients. We have made so many things indigenous to our work. Uh, drugs made indigenously, so many apps made indigenously. I'm sure this uh, this should not, shouldn't be a very distant thing. I place a request on behalf of all the parties. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. I, I don't think it should be a challenge at all for uh, somebody like you. Um, early days, so when we used to have what is one of the continuous renal replacement therapy, we didn't have machines. Again, complicated machines have to be imported from German. Gambo company has to be as a machine. Machine cost 25 lakhs. I heard that uh, Dr. Ravichandran had to treat a patient who required dialysis, but the blood pressure was very low. And uh, there was an engineer who made that machine for him. The mission is actually called Jira, that is a very innovative. So that was a real innovation. So sir has been in this. That was the IIT. Professor Krishnamba. Yes. So again, that mission is also something that we look at. So there is about 25 lakhs. And the running cost is about nearly 30,000 rupees per day. I am sure all this can be done indigenously and very English. So this will definitely cut down the costs of running dialysis units. It cut down the cost of the patient. So, uh, Ravi has been uh, a pioneer in this field. And uh, he does something innovative. Many other times, uh, immediately you will talk something new that he has done. Uh, the Savings Foundation is uh, an excellent work, especially in the area of cystinosis, or some good from Fabrice disease also. So, uh, regarding the work that we do, again, we are looking at prevention. Uh, a study by the uh, Global Health Society published the Lancet in 2016 shows a very high prevalence of CKD in India. The general population is about 50%. And the highest population of the world is about 50%. And this, surprising and not surprising, many people do not know they have diabetes. Many of them do not know they have diabetes. Previously, we thought that diabetes and hypertension is more of a rural disease. Now we know that even in the slums we have diabetes and hypertension. 
Arts. Previously, I had this was considered a very obese man uh, looking at him today, very lean diabetes, 30, 35 years old with diabetes and end stage complications for about 40 years. So, this disease is rampant. It's rampant in India. Uh, I, I don't think uh, uh, we have come to a stage where at one stage in Chennai in 2021 we had uh, those who had COVID or no COVID. The no COVID filters only we had right because almost everybody had COVID. So similarly, almost everybody will become a diabetic over the next 20, 25 years. Of course, there are a lot of environmental genetic influences here. So we are going to have more patients with kidney disease. Uh, prevention is something that we keep talking about. We have to keep repeating it to our patients. But you know, the most important thing is to cut out the diet. So this is a big problem because all of us love meat. We all are used to uh, food cooked at home, the lovely food that is food. Most of it contains a lot of salt, it contains a lot of sugar. And uh, to cut out somebody's salt, sugar, and somebody comes to a nephrologist, we cut out the fluids, we actually make their life very miserable. By cutting out anything. So we, we fellow says, tell me what can I give you? Give me so many tablets. To take these tablets itself, I need to take one liter of water. They are telling me you can't really find it at all. So these are the problems that we face on our daily basis. Problems you don't bother. That is the problem. So we have patients. We have three groups of patients. One patient doesn't bother whatever you do, whatever you say. He thinks out his life. He doesn't bother. The other group, we literally give him five grams of salt, but they very deprive him totally of salt, and this fellow will come with low sodium levels, unable to walk, not able to work at all. So. The way you say it, you know, for part of the person, he said, ah, so don't go there. So that's because we're disabled by these people. So this is one group of patients. So you tell them, okay, what way you're dying, it makes it rich salt. So these are the funny stories that we face every day in our population. But then we get to see patients uh, uh, who are sick, who need long-term uh, dialysis therapies, who need organs. We are again uh, finding an organ is a big challenge in our country. Uh, the robotic accidents, the brain death certification, all this, though Tamil Nadu has done very well in this team, still uh, we have large number of the last two years because of COVID lockdown, we, we did not have accident, which is a good thing. But then because of no accidents, we could not get any organs. So, <laughs> so the number of uh, patients on the wait list also increased uh, terribly. So right now we have, uh, in Tamil Nadu, we have about 6,000 patients waiting for a kidney transplant. So this is a huge number. I do not know when we are going to uh, provide these 6,000 and whether the 6,000 will live till they receive a model. So this is a very huge challenge that we face, tremendous pressure. And we know there is a group of uh, people talking against brain death certification and uh, you know, whether as I, uh, uh, people accusing uh, doctors of stealing organs, etc. So we will live amidst this, amidst this. Our other uh, job is to provide organs, number one. Of course, we have to keep talking about prevention, but what do you do with suffering with multiple of the disease? So this uh, allocation is now done in a manner that's up, uh, appreciable and appreciated by all. But however, maybe we have to have AI there also in organ allocation, scoring systems, etc as it is done in the West. As of now, it is a transparent system, but not the most scientific way to allocate organs. Of course, definitely, uh, government would uh, work with uh, people like IIT to get uh, algorithms for this. The AI actually generates algorithms. Yes. Uh, regarding the artificial kidney, of course, it's going to take ages supposed to come, and, uh, and I, again, I do not know what cost is going to be available. So, uh, I, we have we do a lot of uh, work in the government sector also. The government supports us. In fact, the Tamil government is one of the best models of health care. We have a very strong health system down to the primary health center, the sub center level. I have worked in uh, the Javadi Hills of uh, North Arkham District, the previous North Arkham District, where there was nothing at all. Today we have primary health centers built there. So we have, our system is very strong. That is why we were able to cope with COVID very well. In fact, we were one of the states who did manage COVID extremely well. 
uh, your government took over everything our, our hospital which is a 2500 bed hospital except for dialysis everything was converted to a covid hospital and in spite of that we used to have about 30 40 ambulances uh, and like that uh, before our hospital during peak covid last year uh, in 2020 our hospital treated about 36000 patients of covid in 2020 in 2021, the month of May, we treated 30,000 people. This is huge. This is our hospital. Government General Hospital had much more than this or equivalent to this. And every government hospital had its to be. And innovations came. Uh, for example, when we were finding it difficult to get oxygen, suddenly the oxygen concentrators came. Actually, we called it dialogue at that time. But the oxygen concentrator was something that was very, very handy. We almost every patient in our ward had an oxygen concentrator. And people were recovering from COVID but requiring oxygen could not be sent. A lot of people had residual lung damage. So all of them had to be taken on these oxygen concentrators. And how we managed our oxygen resources was also something very, very phenomenal. So uh, in fact, most of our doctors were on COVID duty, many of them were on COVID themselves. Uh, there was a challenge, the husband and wife are doctors, and then the husband goes for COVID duty one week, it's a quarantine, the wife takes care of the children, and then the wife goes for quarantine for the COVID duty. So it was children were left at home. If there was no elders at home to take care, it was a new challenge. The wife and the husband had to start working in different hospitals. They had adjusted their duties. If the elderly people were there taking care of the children, the coming home was a challenge because we didn't want to infect the elderly people at home. So these were the many challenges uh, that uh, we faced, but we learned a lot of lessons. A lot of our infrastructure uh, improved. We have an oxygen life for everybody in our hospital. Earlier, <laughs> so only the medical areas of oxygen was available. Today, every bed, 2,000 bed beds have got oxygen. So infrastructure also developed during this pandemic. Uh, I could just go on and on. Uh, the government also gives supports uh, transplant in a very big way. Uh, even for a liver or a kidney transplant or bone marrow transplant, there is money given from the chief minister's corpus fund to the private hospital to undergo a transplant. So that's something very great that has been done by our government. Successive governments have actually continued all the policies. In fact, our government, uh, uh, you, you remember that uh, the NGR, late chief minister, was himself a kidney transplant recipient. And after he received his transplant at Boston and came down, the first order that he signed was that all patients who had transplants in a government hospital or even in a private hospital can get free drugs. And uh, when now we went to a conference, people used to just look at it, are you really serious? You're really saying you're giving drugs lifelong free. What is the government spending uh, and budget is keeping on increasing every year? And uh, this has been very phenomenal. Today we are able to get all anti-cancer drugs. Today all the anti-cancer drugs are very, very expensive. The biological agents are very, very expensive. Probably that is also another area that you could work on to bring down the cost since we are looking at indigenous uh, manufacturing. So we are able to do a lot of work for the uh, poor and not all uh, and have to, be part, to be part of that society. Uh, another I say is uh, we are offering this free in the government. Dr. Mani always used to say, no, this is the taxpayers' money, and uh, this is my money that we are using. So you must look at prevention. So ultimately, he used to talk about prevention. And uh, I think as uh, we age, and uh, uh, we will all uh, attain uh, our glory at some time, the point we must all donate our organs. Uh, we could also donate pleasure organs so that at a time of eventuality, uh, our organs could be used for somebody who really required them. As I told you, 6,000 patients waiting for kidneys in Tamil Nadu itself. Just imagine the load in other parts of the country. So, with these few words, I once again thank Dr. Ramsundaran for inviting me. Uh, I have the opportunity to make many old friends, make new friends, and uh, I'm extremely pleased to hear, to hear uh, Dr. Kamakoti speak in a very vernacular Tamil language. <laughs> I also used to say that the best way for a teacher is to put across things in a very, very simple manner. So whatever you read, you cannot talk very complicated things. A third year medical student should understand what you are saying. So you should read in such a way to a great depth 
that you put across things simply. I was really impressed with you about the plan that you did. And I'm sure under your leadership, we will be creating more machinery as well as treatments at IAH and I, indigenous at much deeper cost to benefit the patients. And thank you very much for all this.